Now then, here we are again. You may have noticed um, over the last month or so, there's been a bit of a theme going on. Just in the background of deciding how much of any item you want to keep. I mean, you keep stuff because it's handy and it's there when you need it. But um, there's a point where you've got to do stuff. You've got to have a bit of a clear out. And we've been doing that. And of course, you go down the scrapyard with various things. Electrical components like motors and stuff like that. And all that sort of rigmarole. And batteries and what have you. And you weigh it in. And occasionally you do something naughty. As in, you bring something back. When actually you're supposed to be having a bit of a tidy out. But there's certain things you just can't. You go, no, I'm going to have that. And this is a Solis uh, 1100 watt grid inverter. But one of the nice things about it is it's got a 70 volt start. Which means that if you're a bit of a, an urban guerrilla solarist, yeah, three panels and this will be running. Yeah. So, you know, otherwise you're on to uh, something like an Aurora that needs 120 volts minimum to start it running. So, I've got it. Uh, I know somebody who would really like this. I've tested it and it's got OV bus uh, fault, which I know and some of you know is a relay problem. Uh, very similar to the Aurora E031. Now I'm not going to show you the test because there's no point. So let's dig into this, have the back off. You undo the screws at the back and then lift the front up. So let's crack on. So Lee gave me this really nice lightweight impact driver. Yeah. And it's lithium. That's magic. It is lovely. And it came with a charge. I mean, what more do you want? Ideal for up here in the workshop. Undoing all these torque screws. So I'll get back to you in a minute. Okay, so that's that done. Just pop the seal. Right, I can't remember. I think it's the other way round. Okay, yeah, right, flip it over. Yep, and this should lift up. And if you really want to, there's a ribbon there that you can remove. Okay. You can't see anything, right? But there are four relays here. And let's just zoom down on that. So there we go. They look very familiar, don't they? Yeah. Uh, so let us, um, I think we'll have to disconnect one, two, three, four, five, six there. Okay, I'm just going to draw a quick plan of that. Undo all these lot and flip the board over. And I'm assuming, and it is a huge assumption, but one of the solder joints of these relays will have melted. Yeah, so let me do that and again I will get back to you at that point where we're going to lift the board. Okay, that's wedged up. And let us see. Oh, interesting. 
very interesting. Yeah. Ah, found it. Okay. I'll just move the camera a bit. Whoop. There we are. It's in this top left hand relay. Yeah. So we're going to have to clean that up, clean this track up, and soft wire brush that pin there from the relay and solder it up. Yeah. And the first thing I do is actually scrape round there like that. Try and expose some of that copper track just so that you can extend the influence of the solder. You don't need to see me solder it up. I'll get the big soldering iron out though. You want plenty of heat. You don't want a little... I'll show you in a moment. Right, then I'll wire brush that up. But, where's the big soldering iron? You want something this big, yeah? So that you're going to put a lot of heat on there really quite quickly. Otherwise, with a small soldering iron, the heat wicks away into the relay and you end up heating the relay up and just never quite getting there and then you get a bad joint. So, And I suspect, although I can't prove it, but a lot of these solder joints look pretty appalling. That one doesn't look very good. So I think I'm going to uh, uh, improve that one. I might improve several of them, but you know, it'll take me a while, so I shall leave you to it. But there is a telltale sign down here as well. Just let me zoom out a bit. Where are we? There. On this insulating sheet, there's the burn hole. Okay, back with you when I've got that done. Right. So there it is, soldered up, and I've soldered some more up because they didn't look absolutely that scintillating. So I'll put the, the board back in place, and because that pin has got hot, I'm going to take the top of the relay off and inspect the contacts. Is it the joint that's caused the heat that may have transferred heat to the contacts? Or is it the contacts causing arcing because it's been switched off in the middle of the day too frequently because it's been mounted in somewhere very hot? Yeah, I don't know, but I'm just going to check those relay contacts for any signs of burning or not closing properly. Yeah, it's a frequent fault. So let's just um, carry on. So I'm just putting these connections back on and look at that. That's not very good. So let us just very gently squeeze that back down. That's better. That's not very good either. Okay, let's get this off. Yeah, that wouldn't help. Oh, that's better. That's not good. That's all right. That's, that's still not very good. These have got those locks on them. There. Still not 
No. That's better. So that one's not really good. Uh, there we go. Yeah. God, the quality of this is pretty abysmal, I'd say. Can't see whether, am I still in shot? Only just. Yeah, the quality of this is, leaves a lot to be desired, put it like that. There, that's a lot better. That one's alright, that one's alright. That one's good. That one's good. And that one's good. Excellent. From what I remember, this little white plug here is the temperature sensor. Yeah, so if that's unplugged on some, if you get an OV temp, you can unplug that. Yeah, right, I think we're virtually there. Right, I'll put this ribbon back on, put it back in there, put the top back on, and then we can give it a bit of a road test. I'm assuming we've fixed the problem. Ah, before I do that, I'm going to have the top off this relay and check the contacts. So I'll be back to you shortly. So here's the relay. You can see the contacts there. Contacts touching. There is a little bit of spring, but not a great deal. I'm just going to increase that a little bit. But I think it was a duff solder joint, not a bad relay. The whatever colour light is on, solid, generating. Okay. So let us go into information. Alright, DC, we've got 50 odd, 150 volts. So AC is 28, yeah. Right, let's turn the DC voltage down. says naught watt still come on right we got a hundred and twelve volts DC But it's still showing no no watts, which is a bit weird. Eight thousand two hundred total. You can hear it humming though. We're on eighty volts now. Let's take it down a bit more. Still shows naught watts though. I've locked that now. Oh, there we go. It's just getting itself sorted. 23. Then it was not 23. We'll turn the volts up a little bit. 47 watts. Yeah. So we haven't got OV bus anymore. And the inverter itself is just going where am I what's happening who are you how did I get here it's just working out what's going on right so it's pretty stable now I 
And of course, we're working on a smoothed, rectified signal, not a true DC signal. So we're bound to get some anomalies. Yeah, because there's still going to be a little bit of a ripple, even with that big capacitor in parallel with the rectifier. And if you want to know all about the, the, the test, um, go and watch my recent video. I'll put a link there, yeah, which shows all about the relays and this, um, this testing equipment. But it's working now. Right. Comments, discussion, what have you, yeah, um, subscribe, like, um, donate, um, etc. Catch up with you soon. Cheers, bye. Just as an extra 23 watts. Sixty-four volts DC. Right you are.